I fly on the King Kong 5040 prop uh, since I moved to 4S. Uh, in case you're wondering, near as I can tell, that's identical to the DAL 5040. I've had both of them in my hand and they look identical. I don't know if there's some underlying chemistry difference, some, but uh, they, they seem identical if you're wondering. So King Kong 5040. And I noticed when I was flying with a friend of mine that he was getting much longer flight times than I was. I was getting about two and a half minutes of flight time. He was getting about four to six minutes flight time. And uh, his copter is about his copter is about 580 grams. I'm about 670 grams. So 90 grams of difference, uh, which is not nothing. Uh, if I remember right, it's about, about 15%, 13% something. And I'm flying on 2206 motors, 2250 kV. Uh, he is flying on 2205 motors, a 2350 kV. So very similar kV rating, but my motors are a little bit bigger. Um, so it's expected, I guess, that they would draw more power. Um, but I still, uh, we were flying together and uh, he gets much longer flight times than I do, even when we're both racing and doing laps in about the same time. So it's not like I'm flying hard and he's flying soft. Uh, and we did a little test where we basically hovered in a field next to each other. And in normal forward flight, like slow cruise, he was pulling about 8 amps and I was pulling about 14 amps. So I started to wonder what the difference might be between us. Uh, and uh, I noticed that he flies the Gemfan 5045 Bullnose prop, which is a whole lot of people's very, very favorite prop. And I thought, well, maybe I ought to give that a try. And so I had some interesting results very unexpected results and I'm going to share those results with you. In the course of doing this testing I also gave a shot at flying the King Kong 6040 uh, and I'll talk to you about why I did that so I'm also going to include those results in this review. Uh, you will not find any bench test numbers in this review. This is all uh, subjective flight experience and also I have an OSD with a current meter so I'll, I'll be able to talk to you about current and volts but we're not going to have any uh, grams of thrust which if you think about it, actually, you know, bench tests are all great, but in reality, the props unload in flight. They may make a different amount of thrust in flight than on the bench. So I think there's some value here as well. Let's get into it. So the first thing I'd like you to notice is that I've got the props name in the lower left of the screen for all of the clips. So you'll always know which prop I'm talking about. Everything else about the setup is the same. The other thing I want you to know is that uh, I've got the battery voltage and the current draw from my OSD in the lower left as well. Unfortunately, the DVR cut off the top half of the current readout, so you'll have to do a little deciphering to figure out what the numbers are, but you can usually figure out what the numbers are anyway. Okay, so here at the very top of the punch out, the peak is 57.1 amps at 13.5 volts which is about 771 watts. Here in normal cruise, we're pulling between 10 and 15 amps. And as I go into this section where I'm doing some slaloms through these trees, I want you to notice that my throttle is typically around 1450 uh, and it seldom goes above 1600 when I'm doing the sharp turns at the end. So 1450 is around my normal throttle and below 1600 during the turns at the ends. Show you one more punch out here where I hit uh, 70 amps just for perspective. So there is 71.2 amps at 12.8 volts. Yes, that's a 4S. Uh, and you can see I am hitting 2000 on the throttle. That is the absolute max I can hit. So let's just call this just about the, the most that you can really ask of this battery and this prop. Uh, by the way, this is a uh, 45C continuous rated battery. Uh, 1300 milliamp hour, which works out to something like 57 amps. I didn't check that math just now. Um, but um, you, you can see that the continuous versus the surge rating 
the continuous rating is really what matters on a battery. The surge rating is completely bogus. Uh, yeah, we're pulling 70 amps out of this thing, but we're dropping a huge amount of volts, and, uh, and basically it's just pointless to even look at the surge rating, in my opinion. Okay, so now let's look at the Gemfan 5045 Bullnose. I really expected this to be a rock star prop for me. I expected it to give me more thrust and better flight times, more efficiency. I mean, this is, by all accounts, it's the best prop. Or maybe some people like the uh, 5040 Tri-Blade better, but this is really up there. And I found it very, very hard to fly. Um, I found it very hard to maintain my altitude. Uh, and I found, especially in the sharp turns during the, uh, during the slalom, uh, that I, it, it did not come on, the, the thrust did not come on fast enough to allow me to make those sharp turns, uh, like I did with the 5040s. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, before we do that, I, I recorded some punch outs, but I cannot find the black box data for the life of me, I, I know where it should be. I know the file it should be in. And for whatever reason, the it just doesn't match up and I have no idea why. So you'll have to take my word for it that on a full throttle punch out, the 5045 Bullnose pulled about 70, maybe 75 amps. So just a little more than the 5040. Okay, let's take a look at the video. So the first thing you should see here is that I'm pulling about the same amps, about 10 to 15 amps in this sort of normal cruise. Uh, and my throttle position is a little lower. Uh, I was at about 1450 uh, during cruise. And here I'm closer to maybe 1400, uh, maybe a little less than that. Okay, so you can see I am just super sloppy there. The turns are really sloppy. I'm swinging super wide. Uh, I'm, I'm having trouble making sharp turns. I'm having trouble staying on line during the middle part of the slalom. And I'm in real trouble holding my altitude. I'm having to constantly work the throttle to hold altitude until at the very end, I just fly into the ground. And I mean, I'm like, I'm not like a great pilot, but I'm like, I'm not a, I'm not, <laughs> I know how to hover, right? Um, and you can go back if you want to and watch me do that with the King Kong 5040. And you can see that, you know, it's not like a world-class time, but it's, it's better than that. So I'm not sure what the difference is here, but after really digging into it and really thinking about it and going back to the 5040s after flying the gem fans for three or four batteries, it felt like the real difference was that the 5045 gem fans uh, had a slower response. The, the thrust was much slower to come on. And so I was having to, I was not able to just sort of jam the throttle, turn, jam the throttle, and get back going the other direction as quickly. Uh, and it was hard to maintain altitude because it almost felt like the throttle response was delayed. This is pretty weird because, you know, I was not at the edge of my battery's performance at any point here. And it's not like I'm running some high KV, low torque motor that can't handle a 5045. This is a 2206, 2250 KV. It can definitely handle this prop. So I'm kind of mystified here. I really have no idea what's going on and why this appeared to fly so badly on my setup when everybody else, without really pretty much without hesitation, says it's an awesome, awesome prop. Okay, so then I thought, well, I don't know. Let's just try something completely different. Let's try these 2206 motors on a 6040 prop uh, on 4S. Maybe they like a bigger prop. I don't know. <laughs> so I did it. Uh, I was a little bit hesitant to do it because on the bench, this prop pulled something like, I think it was 28 amps. Uh, but um, uh, I figured I would just go easy on the throttle and see what happened. And I'm happy to show you what happened.
Yes, I have just exceeded 100 amps. So I'll just talk us out as we watch the rest of this video. Uh, the hover throttle on the 6040s was about 1250 to 1300, so a lower hover throttle as you would expect. Uh, I think that it feels like watching this video like I'm going faster, at least on the straights, than I was when I did a similar drill with my 5-inch props. I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison though to say. Uh, the turns have the typical sort of floaty 6-inch prop feel. Doesn't really turn on a dime like the 5-inch props do. Um, and interestingly, my flight time is about the same as I as I with the 5-inch props. Uh, about two and a half minutes. Really no change in flight time. I kind of expected that the greater efficiency of the 6-inch props would give me longer flight times, but probably I'm going faster, and that's resulting, that's sort of negating the efficiency gains. The other thought that I had about the 6-inch props was that uh, I think if you're going to run 4S, if you don't have a battery that can feed them, they're kind of a waste. If I could reliably pump 90 or 100 amps into my motor without, uh, without having huge voltage sag and puffing my battery, the 6-inch props would make sense because I could really thrash the throttle, go high on the throttle, and really make a difference. But as it is, I'm not really able to go above about 75 or 80 percent throttle without really just threatening the battery. And as a result, uh, I, I don't think I'm going that much faster, especially if you take into account the worst turning, than I am on 5 inch. So very interesting. Uh, all in all, I think I'm going to go back to the King Kongs, and I have no idea what's up with the gem fans. And uh, or maybe if I had two copters. I would do this, uh, I would keep a 6 inch one just for fun, but man, only if I had some really high end batteries. On the batteries I have right now, which are Turnigy Nanotech 1300s milliamp hours, uh, 45C, I just don't think, I think 6 inch props are kind of wasted on them because they just can't feed the motors the power they need. All right, well, I hope all this information has been helpful. I sure have enjoyed uh, putting it together, and as always, happy flying.